30 years ago. 30? Yes. He died very young. 70, yes. 72. Exactly. That's at our age. Yes. <laughs> and how old are you? 71. Oh, you're, 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 you're only little. Yes. <laughs> This is my mother. Mm -hmm. yes. It's a very nice friend. Yeah. My father was very young. Yes. 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 So it's very nice to meet you and to have a chance to talk to someone who obviously has experienced so much and collected, looked after this wonderful collection of books and newspapers and papers. Um, when were you born? I was, I was born yes, when? in 1943, 1943, during World War II. Which month were you born? August. August 1943. 20 August. Yes. And where were you born? I was born near Mandalay. In Mandalay. Yes. Um, and do you remember anything about your grandparents, your, either your mother's mother and father? Yes. yes. I, my mother's parents, we, we live with them. Yes. Very close. Hmm. Yes. My grandfather, he lived till 95 years. Hmm. He lived Gosh. with us. Yes, that's why we got a very long time together. And my grandmother, she, she's just like my mother, a very active and wonderful grandmother, I got. Mm. But she was not very, stay very much longer than like my grandfather. She lived till about 80 years. So we, we got a very good relationship then, and we are very close. Mm. This, this place and my house, please. They were all given by my grandparents. Mm. What did your grandfather do? What was his job? Actually, my grandmother ran the business. My grandfather, he just stay at home and reads <laughs> all the books. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's a bookworm. Yes. A bookworm. My, <laughs> yes. My, actually, my grandmother do the business. They, they did the tobacco business, well, grinding of the tobacco, tobacco oh. stand mm. for the cheroot business. Mm -hmm. That's what my grandmother did. Mm. And she, she had six children. Four of them were educated in the university. The youngest one was a doctor, medical doctor. And, her, and their eldest daughter runs a Sherwood's business. Hmm. And um, if your grandfather died when he was 95, he must have been born in the middle of the 19th century? If, Do you know when roughly he was born? Okay, I, I can't tell you exactly, but... What, what day but what year he did he die? When the Haley Comet first appeared. Really, Haley's yes. Comet. Yes. <laughs> oh, well, he told we us first appeared to the wall. Yeah. And he, when he was become eighty-ish or ninety, he bought a telescope mm. to see Haley Comet when it come back to the. <laughs> he might live to that age, but the Haley Comet come back after two or three years when he died. Oh. Yes, and and. The Earth never saw Haley Comet this time again. What, what year did he die? I think it's two years after my father died. That is about 84, 1984. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he was born in 1994. If he was 85. 1894. Um, about 95, mm -hmm. no, about 1890. I think. It must be about 1890. This so, year we, we give a donation to the aged homes for his 125th birthday last yeah. October. 125th. Yes. Yeah. yes. So I think he was born about the same time as my grandmother. Um, she was born in about 1890.
1896. Yeah, she was about she was about the same age. So, you said they were very good grandparents. Yes. Can you tell me something about their character? My grandfather, when he was 90-ish, we lived together at my parents' house. My, there was still my father and mother. And we ate dinner together. And one night, he stood up, he, he sat here, he stood up from the dinner table and he started to lecture about how we had to, how the fruits are rich in, fed, in vitamins and good uh, minerals, he said. You mustn't feel the, the fruits. They are very rich in vitamins. For example, you mustn't feel the potatoes, he said. Mm. <laughs> he, he, he gave us this lecture. Oh, we were so amazed that we all clapped. <laughs> Although he is very old, mm. he prayed hour after hour, and he gave us that lecture how, mm. how the fruits and vegetables are rich in vitamins and mm. minerals. Mm. So he was really just interested in knowledge and yes. reading and yes. information. Um, did you ever talk to your grandparents about the British? The British? Yes, because as you know, my great-grandfather was here when your grandparents were around. And many people are very critical of the British colonial takeover of Upper Burma. Um, other people say that although they weren't perfect, they weren't as bad as all that. Um, and in particular, how they treated the Burmese people with whom they lived. No, we didn't. In my family and in my, uh, including my grandparents, we never talk such bad things about British. Mm. But my great, great uncle, grand uncle, he was the one who Burmese and other cover of religious society. The Buddha Sasana Luka, it means supported organizations. Saboteur organizations, yes. Yes, yes he built a school. Hmm. Yes. Is it a... Yes. He, he built schools for Burmese young children hmm. to to enlighten them, to educate them. Hmm. Do we Is even... it a co ed school? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Girls and boys. Mm. Yeah. What, what they teach, teach in that school? Teaching, they taught in Buddhist, Buddhist texts, literature, mm. and scripture, yeah. no. and history of um, written by mm. historian, king historian. My, my grand mm. uncle. Yeah. What about your this is your father's mother and father. Yes, yes. My father was not from Mandalay. He was from Young Libyan. Uh, uh, that is from the PQ division. Mm. It's near Rangu. My grandparents from my father's side, they were farmers. Mm. But my grandmother didn't live long. She died when she was about 30, 30 years, mm. and she left the younger children, the three sons, with my grandfather. They were farmers in that village. Mm. My, my grandparents are farmers. They grow rice there. Yes, I was, I went 
when I was very young, maybe three or four years old, I've been to their house, but I never seen grandmother. Mm. I've been to my grand. I I remember my grandfather. Mm. He lived there. There is a stream in front of their house. The the how the the village of my grandfather is it's, has lots of fresh fish and mm. yes, and prawns too. Mm. They're very fresh. Mm. I remember. We visit there with with my bigger big brother and mm. mother and father mm. when my grandfather was still living. Mm. But he didn't live very long. Mm. So tell me about your parents. Uh, your father died when he was quite young. Yes, but he was seventy two when he was he died in nineteen eighty two. Mm. How old was he? 72. 72? Yes, he was born in 1910. 1910. And so he was the son of a farmer? Yes. But he went to university or? No, but my grandfather sent both of his sons to study in Yango High School. Mm. Mm. My, the, my father passed high school examination, but he didn't continue university. Mm. He started his own business there. In his very young age, he took a clerk in the in the post office. Mm -hmm. But he he still said, "Jama pe jam le le jam pe sa." Udu Hula was born in Pasong uh, Miao Village, Miao Living District. It was near uh, hundred miles away from Rangu. Rangu. He was sent to Rangu to study. Higher level mm. education. Okay, high school. High school. Mm. He passed uh, matriculation examination in 1930. Mm. 30, but he did not attend the university. Mm. He works as a uh, clerk. clerk in Drango Municipal Organization. He also take part in the football teams. He, He's fond of playing football, uh, playing football. So he was a uh, best footballer in municipal team. Then he have contact with uh, name Uteng. He is uh, he want to make the development of the young men of our country. So they organize an organization, young men progressive. Association in Bami's Junge Kiva Tote. Then they publish a magazine under the title Kiva Yi. Kiva Yi means progress mm. or development. Then he works as an editor of the, this magazine. Then at the time, Lulu Doma was attending. University. It coincides with the 1936 student movement, mm. anti government, anti British government mm. movement. Second, it was called Second School Student Bankout. Mm. First Bankout is August in 1920. Mm. That's, it was regarded as nationality up to now. And Second Bankout, Lulu Dogma was the leader. Of the girl student. And then Lulu Doma write short stories and short stories and articles, translation at that time, and sent her short stories to Kiwai magazine, editor, editor by Dudu Uda. They mm. met there and mm. fall in love. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, when, when did they meet? What year was it they, they met? In, I think 1938, 37 or 38. But first, by correspondent. Only mm. uh, one and uh, one year after they have met, mm -hmm. uh, personally met. Mm -hmm. And they plan to, uh, Lulu Doma went back to Mandalay because she did not continue her university education. Then they got married. Lulu Ula transferred to Mandalay, take it around with 
his press, mm. which publishing mm. magazine. At that time, they began publishing works here. Mm. That so they, they started the publishing press? First, the publishing first, uh, I think, books, for, say, 1938. After not too long after Scan World War, uh, they also published uh, Trials and Power. Trials and Power. College. Yes, Morris College. You have seen that. Yes, yes, yes. Books. My my grandparents knew him. Ah, uh, yes, that yeah. Did you meet Morris College? No. My father met in London mm. when he went to London. Mm. Morris, he. Mm. He met him. Did he meet Orwell? George Orwell? George Orwell. Did he meet George Orwell or not? No. 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 He was in Burma, of course. At that time, I think George Orwell had passed away before mm. Ula arrived in England. Yeah. Yes. So, so tell me something about your mother. She's obviously a very interesting and distinguished person, and this is her portrait here. So, um, in the obituary about her, which describes her as a leading dissident writer, she fought for democracy in Burma. So, she was obviously a remarkable lady. So tell me something about her as you remember her. Did, did she give letter, lectures on potatoes later on? Her? <laughs> <laughs> that was my grandfather. <laughs> yes, my, my mother is a second daughter in the family. Mm. When she married my fa father, they started to have a publishing house and they started to publish books. And in, in 1941, they, they, gave, they had their first son, my elder brother. And in 1943, where, during the World War II, they have to leave the house and everything, but they brought back the printed press with them hmm? to the village near Mandalay, where I was born. Hmm. Hmm. And this, they started to publish books, the, the translation from Japanese, 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 Japanese water. Water. She, you know. They published books in, in, hmm. in that village because there was no paper was available, they printed on the match paper, boxes paper. Match packing paper. <laughs> packing paper. <laughs> <laughs> from the match factory. They got the papers from the match factories and they published on that. Hmm. They used paper, whatever available at okay. that time. Not, uh, are those examples of yeah. the early books? Yeah. <laughs> be nice to see match yes. paper book. Yeah, at that village, they started to organize maybe anti British. Anti British, yes. yes. But our son came and see my father there during the World War II. And they uh, really part anyone. Your The kids don't know He know more than me. The kids don't know the Kentanton, that is the, the chairman of the Communist Party of Burma. She, but he was assassinated in 1967 by the army hmm. government. Do you, you must remember the events surrounding the assassination um, of Aung San Suu Kyi's um, father? Do you? Do you remember? It was 1967, the assassination. Oh, so the kid then told the, the chairman of mm. the Communist Party, oh, yes. not Aung San. Mm. Not that. During the Armstrong. Aung San was assassinated in 
1947. 1947. At that time, he was the member of the uh, governor hmm. consultative, consultative yes. committee. Yes, consultative. that's right. Yes. So, your mother for a while, did they just go on publishing right through the awful events after that, or did they? I think they were imprisoned, weren't they? My time? mother was, was first, only one time in. Mm. That is in 74, 75. No, that is in 77. Mm. Because of my younger brother. Mm. He's a communist, mm. now living in China, mm. in Yunnan. Because of him. He's, he's living in Yunnan now? Yunnan now, yes. Yep. He's in exile. Mm. And because of that, your mother was in prison? Because of him. Were you imprisoned my, as well? My mother, my father, and my younger brother, they were three of them were imprisoned mm. that time. Mm. My mother had to stay for about a year in that prison. Mm. Were they badly treated or just... Mm. Not so much. Not so bad. Yes. Mm. And tell me about your own life and career. What, what happened to you? Yes. But, there were five siblings mm. in our family. My elder brother, me, and the third one is now exiled in China. He's my younger brother. And another sister of mine, we just saw in the publishing house. And the younger, youngest one is, is an, also a writer now. Yeah. There were five siblings mm. in us. And my elder brother, had to went into in the forest in to the Communist Party mm. in 1962, 62, 63. Mm. Going to Donia, Donia. 1962. During this, he joined the armed struggle of Communist Party, and he died in the jungle in 1967. Mm. Mm. And uh, my when? younger brother. He is also a student activist, mm. and he was prisoned for eight or nine years in Insane and in the Cuckoo Island. Mm. Oh. Yes, my younger brother who was mm. in exile. Mm. So he, when he was released from the prison, he stayed about two years with us, and mm. afterwards he has to go back, and this time to the PCP in China. Mm. Yes. Almost 30 years he was there now. We mm. didn't meet him. You haven't met him for 30 years? Yes. Mm. That's sad. I don't know. Will you come back the day after tomorrow? Yeah, so that's match paper. Yes. Really, this is just ordinary paper. Yes. But it's, it's poor yeah, but quality it's paper, obviously. Yeah. Very difficult to get. Yes. Did you see this before the war? Before the war, and this is match paper. This is the match paper. Hmm? In colours. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually quite strong paper, isn't it? Although it's grey, it's 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 quite strong. Match box cover. Match box cover. It's it's actually. Okay. So this is a book of advice to a younger brother. No, right? no, no. I think this is for for the for the young people, mm. for the young men. How to become a good man? Mm. He must be disciplined. He must have good health. Mm. This is all. It's and this was written by your father. In my father. Mm. What about how to become a good woman? Is there, <laughs> is there another book on that? No. <laughs> no. It would be but, more difficult for him to write. But, but my mother wrote in this book all the old, old days. He, he write about the younger women, how the younger people are behaving nowadays. Mm. It was there, there's a mother. Yes, this one. This is about my. my Brother, second party, I, I think. My father wrote for him. Mm. How he wants his 
son to be grown up with so many examples like I think Alexander the Great uh, mm -hmm. uh, he mm. told from the stories how great men are mm. he wrote this book when he had to stay near Maimu because my grand auntie was very ill then during World War II they had to go and stay near the village in Maimu and to, to be near the doctors who can look after my grand auntie. And, and during that period, my father wrote this book for my elder brother, second birthday. He was very happy, he said, to have you, to have his son. And he wanted his son to be a great man one day. But actually, my brother died. Oh, yes. Oh. When he was 24 years, in 1967, uh, uh, that uh, when he illness. was 26 years, of illness, he died in the jungle. Oh, that's right. You mentioned so he just disappeared. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, how awful. So we were talking about your earlier life. Yes. Um, what age were you when you went to school? Maybe five or six years. And that was in Mandalay? Yes. We had, so, what was, so we had convent and boys' school run by the nuns and brothers. Hmm. Yes, I, was, I went to St. Joseph Convent. Hmm. It was run by French nuns. And my brothers went to St. Peter's High School. It mm. was also run by brother. Mm. Yes. We had what was the school like? Was it a good school? Yes, we, it's a very nice school. We, we, all the subjects were taught in English. Mm. This we is why your English is very good. <laughs> yes, that was my basic mm. English. Mm. Yes. And the nuns were pleasant, yes, yes, nice? Yes, yes, yes. Were they Western? They were. They were Western in English nuns. and French. Yes, nuns. And French nuns. Um, and then after that school, where did you go? Yes, I went to the medical school here. Medical school. Yes, I was a doctor, medical doctor. Ah. Yes, I had my postgraduate master course from Yango. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then you practiced as a doctor. Yes, I was a teacher hmm. in the medical school and also a doctor in the districts. Mm. We have to uh, transfer to mm. the districts too. Yes, I walk. In 1987, I was in the Chin Hills as a physician there. Mm. I lived there two years there mm. with my family. And, and from there, I transferred to Bukoku, that is near Bukan. Mm. I, I walked there for five years there, and after then, I. I was transferred to Yangon, mm -hmm. and, and, and I came back to Mandalay in 1995 as a teacher in the medical school. Mm -hmm. I was lecturer, and I became a professor in 2000, mm -hmm. professor and head of the department of medicine department mm -hmm. in Mandalay. Yes. How would you assess the medical condition of Burma over the years in which you were a um, teacher and a doctor, because this, this is an area which traditionally has been very rich, as you know, before the Second World War, and the population had a very good diet and um, living standards were quite good. And then after the war, increasingly, there was poverty and um, malnourishment and many diseases. Is did the situation sort of deteriorate and then has just begun to improve, or is that the wrong picture? It, I think it seemed like that. During, after the wars, maybe the people are very poor, hmm. maybe. But I don't remember those period very much because it doesn't take very long, I hmm. think. Uh, when I was in the medical school, when I was under training, 
the health system is quite good in this country, I think, mm. because everything was free in the hospital. Mm. Medicines, beddings, and also f we can supply food to, mm. to the patients. Mm. And, and we can, as a student, we are our training is very good mm. because so many with uh, contemporary friends, they all become the, they all had a very good pose in this health mm. system to all my friends. Mm. They become directors, they become, well, they become even, they even become ministers of health mm. to my, my friends. Uh, mm. The health system is quite good till 1980 something. When I was posted to the to the district, they're quite good. Only after 88 and onwards, hmm. the people are much poorer. They can't afford medicines. The hospital health system do they have to give money for buying medicines? And most of the good doctors went abroad in that period. Only some of us stay behind, stay here, hmm. and work for the country. Hmm. They went to America or? England mostly, England. because they were trained in England. Yes. Hmm. In English medicine. Yes. So it went down very badly in the later, from about mid 80s, and particularly after 88. Has it begun just to improve a little bit recently or not? Only what, a year ago, hmm. the government puts more money for medicine. Only a year ago. Hmm. So that people not need to buy. But hmm. it it isn't not for all the patients. It's not enough money. It's still not um, free? No. 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 no it's still. And have you noticed doctors coming back at all? I mean, are one or two people returning from abroad to work here or has no. that not happened? No. No? no. Because the condition is not the same here. Mm. What are the most serious forms of um, illness in Burma? I mean, one imagines that waterborne diseases and malaria... Yes, when, when we were young, malaria, tuberculosis, mm. They were, they, they, they gave us so many troubles, tuberculosis and malaria. When we become doctors, malaria become a trouble because people have to travel to the border area, mm -hmm. to, to any places, in, to the forest. And malaria has become a problem, a great problem when, when we are very young. Mm -hmm. People died of malaria from cerebral malaria, from complicated malaria. Mm. It is still a problem today too. Is it, it doesn't is it still a problem now? Yes. In Mandalay? Yes, because people travel so much, has mm. to travel so much. So the malarial um, uh, mosquitoes are in the in the border areas? In in hilly district, yes. Yeah. In the border areas. But not so much in Mandalay. There is no malaria in Mandalay, mm. but people who travel, I see. They, and tuberculosis too, it's still mm. the great problem here because of the drug resistant mm. type and with the emergence of AIDS mm. as a problem. We start seeing AIDS in 1995 here. Mm. Yes, because of mm. the emergence of AIDS, these two diseases are still mm travel in a country. What, what is the um, treatment of women in childbirth like? Is there a high infant mortality rate? I don't know the exact figure, but mm. it is the same, Quite I think. High. Yes. Because most of the patients, they delivered at home, mm. mostly. Yeah, there's, there's shortage of midwives. So. Yes, yes, and and there are no good person who will go do the home delivery, especially mm. in the district and in the villages. Mm. The 
maternal mortality is, mm. is, is still a problem there. Mm. Okay. The problem is? The, the problem of, of health system here is when this government, of Tan Shui government, mm. they, they took so many people to the medical schools. About when we were young, they took only 100 for the medical schools, 100 for Mandalay and two medical schools in Yangon. Mm. They took about 300 years yeah. every year. Now they are taking about 2,000 every year. They, they have no enough teachers, no enough hospital, teaching hospitals. And the problem is because of so many students, they don't have the chance for, chance to, to examine the patients for everything. That, that's why the medical education has mm. become not so very good now. The standard mm. is very... Mm. What often happens then, as we've seen in Nepal, is that private um, people set up medical halls where they prescribe drugs and sell medicines quite, uh, quite expensively. They're not really qualified. Um, is that happening? Yes, here too. So many private hospitals, mm. and they're very expensive too. Because walking around Mandalay, we see these hospitals, private hospitals, and hundreds of names yes. MRCP, MR, yes. whatever, whatever, yes. whatever. And these are presum presumably people who are churned out by the system yes. and uh, just put their name up. And then, what, are, what do you think are the other? major problems that Burma faces at the moment. we have lived through so much and seen so much. Yes. If you were telling young or middle-aged British people. It's a problem of insurgency in the ethnic mm. Insurgency. Places. Insurgency, mm. yes. It's not a peaceful country. Mm. Mm. in the Shan states, mm. in the Kachin area, and in the Kiyan area mm. too. Mm. There's still a problem with the government forces and the insurgent forces. Mm. There is no peace at all. Mm. Um, how, could that, how could that be resolved? They are meeting, meeting, but they can't resolve it. They don't mm. have they, they can't resolve it from both sides. I don't know why. Mm. They, they are doing, doing this business for almost two or three years now. Mm. But they are not in good terms. Although mm. they, are, they, they said they had an agreement, the, the war still broke out in so many places. Mm. That is the most drawback in this country. Mm. So given all this, are you hopeful for your... Do you have children? Yes. I got two children. Mm. My daughter, mm. she's now 35 years old. When she was, when she passed her matriculation, she took the, in English major in, in this uni, Mandy University. But the two school closed for three years then, mm. and she had no, no, she had not studied for three years, and. He went to Oxford Brookes University. We sent her to Oxford mm. Brookes University for comp computing. Mm. She passed BSc, MSc there. Mm. And then she walked since then. That was in 2005. Mm. She's, she lives in London and walked there. And my, my daughter was quite and lucky. She, had, she can study there and have there. What does she work at? What does she do? She's a she, she works at company in, that is known as Research Now Company mm. in London. She's a program officer there. Mm. Mm. My son, he passed a 
medical doctor here. Mm. But he is not interested in medicine. Mm. He interested in history. He read all the books here. <laughs> <laughs> he said he wanted to study in London, he said. Because it was so expensive, I told my son, I, I can't st send you this year, I can send you next year because it was very costly. I don't have enough money for this year. But he wrote to the, but he was accepted. He made it his own, own by, 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 from the internet. He is sent for, for college study in London Sower School. They accepted, accepted him for a master degree in history there. He, he told me, Mom, my mom, I was accepted there. I, I wanted to go there. I said, I, I don't have enough money for this year. I can send you next year, I told him. But his rector, uh, when he applied, when he replied to his rector, I don't have enough money. Please see for the scholarship, he said. Mm. The rector told him, oh, you can't come this year, but you can come next year. I will arrange for that, he mm. said. But in a very few few days, his rector applied. Oh, please tell me about your your registered number of coming to this university. We will set a scholarship for you. So he got his he he made him a, a private funding from two people there. So he went and studied in two thousand and seven for master degree of history there and and he's now doing PhD in history and so mm -hmm. He worked at BBC. He works at the BBC? Yes, Burmese Department. Mm. Mm. Very good. Nice. Yes. So um, this wonderful library and collection. Yes. The, these whole books were collected by my parents. Mm. When we were young, we posed to my friends we are not rich in money, but we are very rich in books. <laughs> these are all the collections. And my, ma my mom wanted to have these as a library. This is his, this is my mother's, with this, with my mother's money we built this building and make, to have a, a library. She saw this happening before she died. Wonderful, it's a wonderful story. Who do you hope will take over? Your son, maybe? Yes, yes. yes. He, he has the qualification. Yes. He's probably read most of the books anyway. <laughs> anyway, we're having competition from the local karaoke. Um, <laughs> so um, maybe we can, I can ask a few more questions when I come back from Mamio. But it's a great privilege to talk to you. And thank you very much indeed. My mother would have loved to have met you and talked to you. <laughs> I'm sorry, she's dead and cannot do so. Thank you, thank you again. Thank you so much.